What is dementia? Dementia is the name for a group of symptoms that commonly include problems with memory, thinking, problem solving, language and perception. In a person with dementia, these symptoms are bad enough to affect daily life. Dementia is not a disease in its own right and it is not a natural part of aging. Welcome, science maniatics, to another riveting episode. Today, we unravel a mysterious diagnosis that has shaken Hollywood's movie industry. Bruce Willis's family has disclosed that the 67-year-old star is suffering from frontotemporal dementia, FTD, a debilitating condition that affects personality, behavior, and language. The Willis family stated that the diagnosis was painful, but having clarity was a relief. FTD is an umbrella term for a group of brain disorders that primarily affect the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. While it is the most common form of dementia for people under 60, there are no treatments available. The Willis family hopes that any media attention can be focused on raising awareness about the disease that needs more research. Bruce has always believed in using his voice to raise awareness about important issues publicly and privately, and the family feels that if he could, he would bring global attention and connectedness with those who are also dealing with this debilitating disease. It is a cruel disease that many of us have never heard of and can strike anyone. But the deeper question is why and where does this disease really come from? In fact, where do all diseases come from? Did they just evolve or somebody greater who many call God Almighty? If diseases evolved, then did they evolve to kill us? Because that is exactly what diseases do. The word disease comes from the Middle English word diseason, which meant to make uneasy trouble. The original use of the word disease did not refer to an illness, but rather to a harmful development such as in a social institution. Currently, Merriam-Webster defines disease as a condition of the living animal or plant body or of one of its parts that impairs normal functioning and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms, while Dictionary.com defines it as a disordered or incorrectly functioning organ, part, structure, or system of the body resulting from the effect of genetic or developmental errors, infection, poisons, nutritional deficiency or imbalance, toxicity or unfavorable environmental factors, illness, sickness, ailment. The origins of disease or pathogenesis refer to the study of the processes that give rise to physiologic dysfunction and illness. As a result of Bruce's condition, he will be stepping away from the career that has meant so much to him. The family appreciates the continued love, compassion, and support from Bruce's fans during this difficult time. They are moving through this as a strong family unit and will continue to ensure Bruce lives life as fully as possible. So what does all this have to do with science and technology? The specific brain disorders that fall under the umbrella of FTD can vary, but some examples include behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia, BVFTD, primary progressive aphasia, PPA, and corticobasal syndrome, CBS. Each of these disorders can have slightly different symptoms and presentations, but all involve a progressive decline in cognitive abilities and changes in behavior, personality, or language. The term dementia originates from the Latin word dementia, which means madness or insanity, and is derived from the word demons, which means being out of one's mind. The concept of dementia was not initially limited to senile dementia, but also included various psychiatric and neurological conditions leading to psychosocial consequences. Today, dementia is defined as a condition of the brain that is characterized by a deterioration in the ability to think, reason, or remember, and results in deteriorating mental functioning. It is important to note that dementia is not a specific disease, but rather a general term for the impaired ability to remember, think, or make decisions that interferes with doing everyday activities. The earliest record of dementia syndrome dates back to ancient Egypt, around 3000 BC, when Prince Ptahhotep mentioned senile deterioration, which they believed was a consequential natural landmark in the process of human aging. 
The Ebers Papyrus from 1500 BC also describes senile decay and alcoholism. Research into the underlying causes and treatments for various forms of dementia, including frontotemporal dementia, FTD, involve a variety of scientific approaches. Advances in genetic research have identified several genes associated with FTD, such as MAPT, GRN, and C9ORF72. One study noted that 60% of familial FTD cases were associated with mutations in these genes, with C9ORF72 mutations being the most common at 25%. In addition, researchers use imaging techniques such as MRI and PET scans to investigate changes in brain structure and function in patients with FTD. Further studies also explore the roles of various cellular processes, including inflammation and protein misfolding, in the onset and progression of dementia. In general, a multidisciplinary approach is used to study the causes and potential treatments of various forms of dementia. According to a study, regular consumption of processed meat increased the relative risk of all dementias by 44% and Alzheimer's disease by 52%. Certain foods have also been linked to increased rates of Alzheimer's disease, such as processed cheeses and meats. The brain and gut are physically connected through a network of millions of nerves, including the vagus nerve, which is the longest nerve in the body. The gut and its microbes can also control inflammation and produce many different signaling molecules that can affect the brain and its function. This connection goes both ways, as the gut can send signals to the brain and a troubled brain can also send signals to the gut, causing stomach or intestinal distress. This is why many people who experience anxiety, stress, or depression can also experience stomach or intestinal distress, and why a person's gut or stomach issues can cause or be the result of such mental health issues. The enteric nervous system, ENS, is a secondary brain located in the gut, and by studying the brain-gut connection, researchers have found that this little brain can help doctors understand how gastrointestinal symptoms are affected by the brain and vice versa. Moreover, gut bacteria can stimulate immune system cells in the wall of the gut, and the immune cells can then send signals through nerves to the brain, causing an impact on mental health and brain function. The gut and brain are intimately connected, and research has found evidence that gastrointestinal distress can send signals to the brain and trigger mood changes. Similarly, mental health issues can also cause gastrointestinal symptoms. The physical and chemical connections between the gut and brain are referred to as the gut-brain axis. Certain gut bacteria have been shown to influence our vulnerability to brain diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and autism. Overall, maintaining a healthy gut can have positive effects on both physical and mental health. There are several ways in which artificial intelligence, AI, and other advanced technologies can potentially help with FTD and other similar diseases. One application of AI in healthcare is predicting an individual's risk of certain diseases and suggesting preventative measures which could help with early detection of FTD and potentially delay its onset. Additionally, AI can aid in medical diagnosis and treatment by revealing patterns in disease from multiple sources of data. In fact, a recent study has shown that AI can help diagnose FTD by analyzing the complexity of speech patterns. Another potential use of AI and big data is for gene therapy delivery systems which can significantly alter the way these diseases are treated. In addition to AI, other advanced technologies may also be helpful for FTD and similar diseases. For example, speech analysis software may help monitor disease progression and changes in speech patterns in patients with FTD. Additionally, as AI and other technologies continue to advance, they may also help to process routine requests, prioritize tasks, and streamline workflows for healthcare providers allowing them to better care for patients with FTD and other similar diseases. Now let's take a moment to reflect on this new information. It's scary to think that a disease can take away so much from us, even our voice, which shows us life is very short. We think we have forever, but we don't. 
We look and see Bruce Willis being in all these action movies to now not even being able to speak. Are we reflecting on what life really is and why we are truly here? Are we using science properly to understand life more so that we can have more life abundantly? What do we know about the brain and how it affects our personality and behavior? What support can we offer to families and loved ones dealing with FTD? We hope this episode has been enlightening and has encouraged you to learn more about FTD and to reflect on life in general. I heard a wise person once say, we are like grass, here today and gone tomorrow. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and we'll see you next time.